two, one, welcome in. So pressure within drops and bubbles. So I just wanna be able to show you kind of and derive the formula for the pressure when you're dealing with a drop and a bubble when you're talking about surface tensions. So both drops and bubbles, the way that they're kind of structured, you have pressure inside and that pressure is pushing out against the surfaces and those surfaces are intact because of the surface tension which is kind of withholding um, the actual pressure not allowing the bubble or the drop to kind of break apart now you may have seen the equations themselves for both so let's imagine now on the left k okay, i'm going to assume that this is a drop which means that you have on the interior so it's basically filled in okay and it is filled in with some liquid so maybe you can imagine it's water but it doesn't have to be water so any liquid and it's a drop and it's spherical and then on the right hand side we're going to assume that it's a bubble so that's what we have so we have a, a drop and a bubble now the formula itself when you're considering a drop then what you will find in this case is that the pressure and this is the gauge pressure inside so the pressure inside of the bubble is bigger than the atmospheric pressure outside so this is for the gauge pressure it is equal to 2 times the surface tension kind of coefficient for whatever that liquid is then it is divided by the radius of that drop now for a bubble it looks almost identical but it's twice as much so you see a 4 instead of a two so now the question is you know why do we have this discrepancy between a drop and a bubble so the main discrepancy and i will show the derivation as well is because of the fact that the bubble has twice the amount because a bubble on the interior you know you can assume that it has air on the interior and it has air on the exterior so you know within here okay so there's air, this is filled with air and of course the air is also outside while a drop is only okay exposed to the air on the outside and on the interior it's basically fully liquid so that's what happens there and that minor change is the reason why we have the two formulas in a drop you only have one surface exterior surface so that this is the exterior surface within a drop because interior is just made okay, completely of cohesive that you have cohesive forces within there. Within the bubble, because you have air on the inside, so that's why I drew it a little bit thicker. So you have, you know, you kind of have, okay, this, let me just maybe change this. So on the uh, inside, so within this bubble, you know you have cohesive forces that are holding this bubble in but the liquid itself is only on the exterior right but while on the interior so on the inside you have just air so you have an interior surface within the bubble and you also have an exterior surface which is exposed to the air so you have both air inside and outside so you have two surfaces. So there's gonna be two, two tensions coming in, both from the outside and from the inside. While for the drop, you only have one. So because of that, this is the reason why this is a four and not a two. So if that's enough for you, okay, then you know, you're good to go there, okay, if that's the only thing you were wondering about. Now, if you're wondering about where this pressure actually comes in so the actual formula itself for the pressure okay so let's break this down so please keep in mind so what we have is we have the atmospheric pressure okay which is outside so you know we can certainly write this in so this is p atmospheric on the outside and then on the inside we have the um, pressure okay and this is going to be the absolute pressure which is both the atmospheric plus the gauge pressure and this P right here, so this is the gauge pressure that we have because it's obviously the difference between the two that we're interested in. So 
How does this come about? Well, so I'm gonna take the drop um, into consideration first. So if you take this drop, you know that the pressure, so this is the pressure on the inside, is equal to the force divided by the area. So that's what you have there. Now, this particular force um, and the area, we wanna be able to kind of relate it back to the surface tension forces. So this is now very tricky because what you have to do is you have to now take the actual surface and then break it somewhere and see. So you can take any piece on the outside. So you can take any piece at all, okay, on the outside. And then on the boundary there, you know, it's going to obviously be surface tensions, right, that are holding it in, that are withholding the actual pressure there. So you have pressure pushing out, and then you have the surface tensions, which are trying to keep this all together, not to break that pressure that you have. And of course, assuming that it's static, right? So now that it's kind of held in there. So if you imagine this and you try to redraw this, so I'm gonna just try to draw it as a kind of a dome, okay, within here. Well, this is not what I wanted, but okay. So, well, let's you know draw the actual sphere and let's break it down. Let's maybe do that. Now, you might be asking yourself, all right, so within here, so you know, you can take the stone and I'm cutting it in half. Now, I'm cutting it in half because of complete convenience. You don't have to just take half the dome, okay? So within here, so this is gonna be like this, okay? And you know, you have this right here, so this is basically half the dome or half the actual drop in this case. And what is happening is that Within here, so if I cut this, right, so right on the edge, on that surface, all the way around, right there, what I have is, I have these surface tensions that are obviously trying to keep this drop intact with the other half on the other side, right? It's Because if it was kind of cut in half, then the surface is gone, and there's no more of that drop at all but it's holding it in, so that tension exists there. Now, the pressure, however, is pressing everywhere, right? So it is pushing against all over the place, right, against this. On the entire surface, on the bound, so it's pushing out. And what we wanna be able to do is that what is that pressure that the, the actual surface tension is able to withhold? So if you go back to the equation, so this pressure that we have is equal to the, the surface tension, okay, that we are going to have divided by the entire surface area, right? So this is, it's kind of like the tension all the way around and then the pressure itself is the entire pressure, okay, that you have within there. And it is being kind of multiplied by the entire surface area. But, so as you may know, because we've cut this conveniently in half, if we cut it somewhere else, you know, a quarter, halfway, you know, second, a quarter, okay, or maybe at the top, or maybe we've only cut a little piece, we could have done any of those but those are not convenient. It would be very difficult for us to calculate the actual forces present there because we would have to kind of integrate across that surface. That would be difficult. But in the halfway point where we just have two spheres, it's actually very easy for us to do that because when you take the half, then if you take, you know, let's say one pressure, I'm gonna just take in kind of one pressure that is pushing out Right? When it's vertical, it's that entire piece that counts. But if you have the pressure points that are pushing out okay, on the sides, so let's say maybe it's one of these right here, so let's say that that's that one. Well, you have an opposing one which is on the other side as well, so that pressure. And as you can see here, so it's gonna have two components. One is pushing it okay, this way and one is pushing it up. One is pushing it up, and then one is pushing it this way. The left and the right cancel each other off completely. So really, the only ones that contribute to the pressure 
pushed up again because we conveniently cut it in half is the actual pressures in the vertical direction so upwards so we're only going to be counting the vertical directions and now what we can do okay so this is kind of like a, a little bit of a leap of faith because what we're doing is we're taking it over each pressure point okay over the entire surface area we can project that down so we can take all of these points and project it onto okay if you project it onto now 2D, so instead of having the dome and the entire surface area all the way around, we can project it down onto this surface right here, right? So that surface is really just a circle. So that would have been the area of the circle. Now we know what the area of the circle is. The area of the circle is 4 pi r squared. So this is it's, it's, it's subtle, but you might ask, hold on, that's not actually the surface. The surface is the dome. And you're correct. The surface is the on the exterior. But because we are now taking only the vertical components because everything else cancels off, okay, there is okay, a property that we can show. I won't show it in this video, but I'll put a link okay, maybe to a reference if you're interested that explains you can actually project that out and taking the surface, not of the dome, but actually just the actual circle, which is the projection down onto 2D. And if you do that, then this equation that you have for pressure, so if this is the surface tension, now again, this is the surface tension at these points, right? So it's these, right, that are actually going against these ones, which are, you know, pushing this thing upwards. So you have that. Now, for your surface tension, because surface tension only happens on the exterior, right? That is the surface, it's the last surface all the way around, okay? Well, that's a circle. So what we have in here is that this surface tension from just a simple definition, okay, is equal to the surface tension coefficient of whatever liquid we have, which is the surface tension all over, the length that it is acting on. Well, it is acting on the entire length all the way around here on that surface. There's only one because it's a drop, so it's on the outside. So what that means is that you can take this, you can isolate it for, so this is gonna be gamma times L. So that's going to be your entire surface tension. That is all of this. Okay, every single one of these summed up together across that entire length on the surface all the way around. That's what you have there. So this is gonna be your gamma times your L. So this is your surface tension, okay, per unit, okay, of distance. So typically this is in newtons per meter, but it doesn't have to be, okay? So it just depends on which unit you're using. And then this is being divided by the area, but we just uh, said, okay, that the actual area itself is going to be pi r squared, right? So now if we substitute everything in, so the L, which is the length all the way around the circle, so that is just 2 pi times the radius, okay, so this would have been the radius of that or the radius of the drop. And then this is divided by, well, the area is pi r squared. So that's the, uh, the surface, so it's the area of the circle. And now notice what happens. The pi's cancel, one of the r's will cancel. And what you have is 2 times the surface tension, okay? So that coefficient divided by r, and that's the pressure in the drop. So that's what you have. Now, if you were doing the bubble, nothing actually changes. The only thing that changes now is the fact that your length right here, so this particular length, everything else is the same because now you have two surfaces on the interior, so on the interior and on the exterior. So when you're going all the way around here, so as you're kind of looping around, it is 2 pi r, but it's two surface tensions that you are kind of withholding in. On the inside, there's a surface, 
So 2 pi r of that, and then on the outside. Now, we assume, I mean, obviously there's a slight difference because if it, if it does have a depth, it's not exactly 2 pi r for both. Okay, however, for a bubble, we typically assume that, you know, the bubble is so thin in comparison to the entire length around, so the circumference, that we just say it's twice 2 pi r, right, on the interior and the exterior. And when you do that, when you put the 2 inside of here, so this is going to be 2 times this, then obviously 2 times 2 is going to change this to 4. So that's the reason why we have a 4 here while a drop only has a 2. So there you have it. So those are actually the formulas okay, that we have for the pressure for a drop or for a bubble. Now, if you're thinking about units, if you want to keep all units in metric standards, so the SI units, so pressure would have been in Pascal's. Okay, so this, the surface tension for that liquid is in newtons per meter. Okay, the radius you would have changed to meters and you can certainly use that. You can use other ones as well because typically those ones are pretty big. The, these pressures on the inside of the bubbles and so on, they're not very big. Okay, um, but you know, you, you certainly can have them big enough. Okay, so that's what you would have in here. So there you go. So I hope that this gives you an explanation um, in trying to see why there's a difference between a drop and a bubble uh, and the reasoning behind it. Thanks for watching. See you in future videos. Bye, everybody.